Okay. Hello, I'm Mike Alpine, and I'm going to, to talk about how to do iOS development uh, with WebRTC. So first we look at how to build uh, an iOS WebRTC app using the AppRTC pod. And then we'll talk about building your own pod and compiling your own code for WebRTC. And we will talk about PushKit and CoreKit, which are uh, frameworks from Apple, uh, which are meant to help in building VoIP applications. So what we will uh, see is uh, how to build an application which is similar to the example code in uh, WebRTC. Um, it uh, connects to an AppRTC server. AppRTC is uh, an open source uh, project from Google that you can uh, find on GitHub. And uh, our application will connect to that uh, server and be able to make a video chat with another client also connected to the server. So about the AppRTC pod. Uh, it's listed on CocoaPods at uh, CocoaPods.org, Pods uh, AppRTC, and it also has a GitHub repository. Uh, at IS, it's on ISBX slash AppRTC iOS. It contains a pod spec, header files, and a demo application. And the code for WebRTC is uh, updated from January 2016. It's a pristine I.O. Uh, compilation of WebRTC. So how do we use the pod? We create a project. For example, we'll call it Cranky Geek Demo. And in the project directory, from the console, we will run a pod install. Um, and, uh, and it will install the, the AppRTC pod for us. So what we get is the workspace where uh, in the upper part, you can see the files for the AppRTC Geek Demo. And, uh, uh, and you also have a pods project containing the code from AppRTC pod, which actually has two dependencies. One is the libjingle peer connection from Pistin.io, and the second one is the, the socket rocket library. And this is the pod itself. What's important to look at here is uh, first you can see the, the GitHub uh, path for the AppRTC pod. And you can also see the frameworks that are needed in order to build an application using that pod, the, the iOS frameworks, and the native libraries that you will compile with, and the two dependencies, libjingle peer connection and socket rocket. So in order to make the code, these are the, the key ingredients uh, in, in, in the application. Uh, in our app delegate, we will have to initialize the SSL library that comes with WebRTC and deinitialize it. Uh, the SSL library is used in order to be able to uh, talk to our uh, server in a secure way. So in initialization, we call initialize SSL and upon termination, deinitialize SSL. Uh, we, when we start the, the application, what we will see is, uh, is uh, the main view where we will input the uh, room number on which we want to connect. When we press start call, we will start connecting. And in our code, what we will do is create a, a jingle client, ARD app client. This is a, a, an object that knows how to talk to an AppRTC server. It's part of WebRTC's code. And uh, uh, we will tell it to connect to our room. Uh, the, the client will know that we are its delegate, so it will call back with, uh, with methods on the on, on the events and the notifications. So uh, a little bit on the anatomy of our application. Uh, we will have a core view controller, and that core view controller will have a video view with two sub-views, one for the remote video and the other one for the local video. And this is the process that will happen. Our core view controller will ask the ARD app client to connect to the AppRTC server. It will send the connect request. And when it does that, it will also start the camera. And we will get a callback from it that uh, a local video track exists. Uh, after it is connected, a video will start streaming from the network, and it will give us another callback 
about the remote video track. And what we will do, so we, for the camera, we will, uh, WebRTC will open the camera and create an RTC video source for it. Uh, and then it will use that one to create a local video track and give us the callback so we can store it and point it to our local uh, video view for rendering. And this way, the camera image will show on our uh, local view. Uh, for the remote, it's similar. An RTC video source will be created for the remote video. A remote video track will also be created by WebRTC. Uh, we'll get the callback from the ARD app client, and we will touch it to our view and show the remote side video. So this is how it's done in code. Uh, did receive local video track is where we attach the local view to the video track to, to the camera video track, and did receive remote video track is where we will attach the view to the remote video track. And more on video in Chris Singleton's session right after me. Uh, so hanging up, we'll just call the client's disconnect function and clean up the code, and clean up after ourselves. So this is uh, how to use the AppRTC pod. But uh, what if you want to use your own pod? And there are several reasons uh, you may want to do that. So uh, the first, you want to use the latest code from WebRTC. Um, second, you want to make changes to WebRTC and customize some stuff. For example, later I will talk about CoKit. In order to work with CoKit, you can't use WebRTC as is. You, you have to make some changes that are not still there in the code, and uh, so you will want to customize WebRTC. And maybe you want to use a different server. You don't want to use AppRTC server. You have your own server, your own protocol. You want to work in a different way. So you want to make your own pod. So what I did was I took AppRTC from GitHub and I cloned it. And I cloned it under Ari Kalpering, AppRTC iOS. And then uh, I changed it to use WebRTC from last month. It was the latest code when I prepared the, 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 the pod. Uh, it's not listed in Cocoa Pods, so in my uh, pod file, I will uh, put the GitHub uh, path instead of just putting the name of my pod, WebRTC. And then, uh, and then I, I built the WebRTC code, so how did I do that? You have the link, uh, it's, it's in under webrtc.org, native code iOS, where you can, have, you can get an explanation on how to build WebRTC for iOS. So first you get the, the prerequisites, which is to install depot tools and get the latest X code. And then you fetch the code uh, using fetch command. It's part of the depot tools. And you specify you want WebRTC iOS. And you run gclient sync, and that's it. You have the, the code for WebRTC on your computer. Uh, it's important to uh, disable spotlight indexing on the directory you, where you get it, because later when you build, it takes a long time to build. And if you disable spotlight, it will be a little faster. So for each architecture, I built for ARM32 and ARM64. I didn't bother with the simulator. The uh, main reason was simulator does not have a camera, so it was not interesting. So for each architecture, I built WebRTC. And what happens when you build WebRTC? WebRTC is made of many modules. And each module has its own static file. And it's a nightmare to compile all of them in an application. So I uh, took them and I put them all in one, one big file. And I used libtool in order to do that. And for the release version, I also stripped all the symbols, and this reduced the file by a factor of 10. So. And using LiPo, I took all the architectures and made one file that I can use with the Xcode. Then I copied all the relevant header files and the compiled library into my pod. And the scripts for 
that can show you how to build R in the scripts directory in my uh, GitHub repository. So if you want to look and see how uh, this magic is done, you can find it there. So what did we see until now? We, we, we looked at how to build the, an iOS WebRTC application using the app RTC pod. And then we talked about how to build your own pod and compile WebRTC from scratch. And next we are going to talk about Pushkit. So what is, why do we need Pushkit and what is it? In order to get an incoming call with, in a VoIP app, you have to be connected to your server. Uh, but the problem with being connected to your server is uh, that you have to listen all the time to, to things that come from your server. And the, the main issue with this is it drains your battery. You lose battery all the time, even if you do nothing. And the second problem, which is uh, harder to, to, which you can't uh, overcome, is that uh, this on iOS w w was being done using a thing called VoIP socket. It was deprecated in iOS 9, and in iOS 10, it no longer works at all. And Apple introduced uh, VoIP push in iOS 8. So how does VoIP push work? Uh, we have uh, two clients here, and both clients, when they start uh, working, what they do is they, they get a token from the operating system, which identifies them in the APNS, Apple's push notification service. Um, they take this token and they tell the server, uh, listen, I'm a client X and this is my token. So from now on, when the server wants to uh, talk to, to client X, it knows which token to use in APNS. And client 1 wants to, to send a message to client 2 and wants it to, to answer a call. So it sends a message to the server, uh, call client 2. The server uh, looks up client 2 and finds its token and tells APNS, I want you to send a push with an incoming call to the client identified by this token. APNS looks at the token, it says, okay, I know this client is located at uh, this IP and this port and sends the, the push to, to the client and the client gets the push, wakes up and can uh, answer the call. So if you want to use Pushkit, you have to prepare your application for that. Uh, in Xcode, first of all, you need to add a background mode called VoIP notifications. And uh, in Apple, as usual with Apple, everything is a bit of a headache. You have to create uh, an iOS VoIP services certificate and compile the application with that certificate. A little, a little bit, a little code. In your app delegate, you uh, import Pushkit, and when your application finishes launches, you do a VoIP registration, and this is done by creating a PK push registry object and telling it that the desired push type we are going to use is push type VoIP. And the main advantage of push type VoIP is uh, it has a very high priority in APNS. And so you, are, uh, you will get it in the, in the minimal latency and, and as fast as possible. So uh, uh, handling credentials update. Credentials update is where the, the iOS updates your token. So when your application starts or whenever uh, iOS changes the, the token, uh, you will get the callback in your uh, app delegate. Uh, which is uh, did update push credentials. And when you get that uh, callback, you can take the token out of the credentials and update your server and say to the server, now my token is this. And when you get an incoming push notification, you will get uh, a did receive incoming push with payload and there you will get the uh, PK push payload. And the PK push payload is a, a special uh, field which is the UUID, and it identifies the push transaction in the system. And we'll soon uh, see when I talk about Cockit how to use that. So, Cockit. Um, what is Cockit? 
Apple is saying that uh, CoKit is a framework that's going to elevate your third-party applica VoIP applications to a first-party experience. And what does that mean? So it, uh, first, it means uh, receiving, you make a call on your VoIP service appear like any other native call. Uh, you can start your, vo your VoIP calls from contacts, recents, or any other way native calls are started. Uh, the incoming call screen will now look like a native call. Any one of you who, who has a VoIP application which updated to VoIP call uh, probably noticed that when you get a call, you no longer get the the, the usual screen, but you get the, the native call. It's, I was very surprised when Skype did that for me. So um, the screen, the call screen also looks like uh, a native call. And here you have an example. Uh, you can see the, the incoming call. And the difference between the, the incoming call screen here and the usual incoming call, uh, incoming uh, call screen is that uh, here I have my service name on the, on the screen instead of saying, for example, uh, mobile or whatever. And the call screen also has a small difference. There is uh, an icon for my application with my service name that I can uh, press and change the UI to my uh, application UI. So CoKit is built of two main uh, classes. One is the six provider and one is the six call controller. And what are they used for? So let's look at them uh, one versus the other. Six provider is used to receive out of band notifications. And those are not user actions. For example, an incoming call. Six call controller, it's used for requests from your application, which are local user actions. And uh, these are internal events like start call. It interplays also with other providers in the system. For example, if I'm doing a, a call with the usual uh, mobile telephony and I want to start a, a VoIP call, I can uh, ask a six call controller to start my call and it will uh, hold the, the, the current uh, telephony call and allow for my call to, to take place. Uh, example uses, uh, we use six provider to report incoming calls, outgoing call connected, call ended on the remote side, and six call controller we need to use to request starting an outgoing call, answering a call, or ending a call. So six provider sends uh, messages to the system via an object message uh, called six call update and it receives uh, notifications from the systems with an object called six action. <coughs> six call controller sends a notification to the system uh, via six transactions. Let's look at some use cases. So we get an incoming call via push. Our incoming call handler is called. We say to a uh, six provider, six call update, incoming call, and it notifies the system, and the system shows the uh, native uh, uh, incoming call screen. When the user answers, the system notifies the six provider with the six answer action, which notifies our handler, and we now notify our VoIP server that the user answered the call. Ending a call, similarly, but this time it's a six and call action. So how do we set call kit in our application? Um, indeed, finish launching with options. Uh, first thing we do is we create a configuration object for our uh, VoIP provider. And we uh, create a six provider with that configuration. Configuration contains our name and several other uh, parameters. And we say to the provider that uh, our app delegate is the delegate for, uh, for, for uh, callbacks from uh, this provider. And we also create a call controller. So if we receive a call from push, uh, first thing we do is we extract the UUID from the, the push. 
And we use that UUID to, to save the call in our database. We will identify it by the UUID. And we will create a six call update object and report to the system uh, via, uh, to, to six provider via report new incoming call with UUID, provide, uh, uh, that the call uh, uh, is, is, is incoming and we give it the UUID. And we may get an error, for example, if the user sets the device to not, do not disturb, then the call will not go forward and Cockit will return an, an error to us. But if everything works well, according to Apple, we need to um, allocate an audio controller object for the call. But uh, this is something you don't do when you use WebRTC. As Chris will explain later, WebRTC uh, handles uh, its own audio session, and doing this will uh, create unexpected results. So uh, in contrary to what Apple is saying, don't mess with the audio at all when you use the uh, kit. Uh, so when the user answers the call, we first uh, say uh, the action is fulfilled, and then we uh, notify uh, uh, our server that the user answered the call. And when call kit starts audio, according to Apple, we need to start the audio on the device, and again, since we are using WebRTC, don't do that. Um, ending a call, so the user uh, presses the, the hang up button, and we need to tell our server that the, the call has ended and fulfill the action. Starting a call, uh, for example, I, I won't cover the case where you, it happens from recent and other places, but uh, let's talk about when it's done from our UI. Uh, we call the call controller and we uh, give it a six transaction, which means start the call. The system uh, accepts that uh, six transaction as if it's possible to start a call, uh, or maybe there was a telephony uh, call that was going on and, uh, and the system needed to hold that call. And after it holds the call, it will give us a six start call action. And you are now a start call handler. We will notify our server that we are starting a call. So this is how it's done in code. Uh, we, we, we create a six start call action, and then we request a transaction from the call controller. And when the system authorizes the, the starting of the call, we will get the perform start call action where we will tell our server that the, the call started and fulfill the action for uh, CallKit. So if you want to read more on CallKit, you can find it on, uh, on Apple's developer site. There's a very nice presentation there from uh, WWDC 2016. 